everybody. Welcome back. Let's fall together. Help me, Jesus. So, I saw a sign earlier in a store, and it, it was a lot of things, but this one word stuck out to me. It was the word indulge, and that, that made me think of uh, Galatians. Now, in Galatians 5, Paul's talking about living by the Spirit, that we're not under the works of the law. We're not striving and trying. We found hope in Christ Jesus our Lord in His finished work, and He's working in us to make us more and more like Him for His glory, for His honor, because He is amazing and full of steadfast love. So, verse 13, it says, For you were called to freedom, brother. See, in Christ we are free. Only don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, in other words, let me say this. In Isaiah 55, the prophet says, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. And he says, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Don't indulge the flesh through the spirit that God gives you. We're, we're called to follow him and, and put things to death and live for what matters. I love Ephesians chapter 4. Well, it, it, Ephesians is just a great book. If you haven't read it, I challenge you and encourage you to read it. Make some time out with the Lord. And man, it is just full of promise, hope, love, and direction for God's people. Man, I, I love that book. It, it talks about it's being sealed in the beginning through faith. When we heard God's word preached to us, our, our hearts were sealed. With the promised spirit guaranteeing the redemption. And you know, Jesus said to his disciples, you know, no one can take you out of my hand. Like it, we're secure in him. Man, that, that promise, that hope we have in him is faithfulness and his goodness and his love and, and mercy, which endures forever. Hallelujah. Now, chapter two, he talks about us being raised from the dead, not because of awesome things we did. But because of his mercy, he brought us out of the pit, out of the miry pit, and brought us into new life. Forgave us our sin. Gave us the miracle of redemption. Why? Because he paid it all for us. Amen. And then chapter 3. I mean, I love that. It's talking about, you know, in the beginning it's talking about Paul's uh, call to ministry a little bit. And, and then he goes into talking about God's love. Praying for us that we would know God's love that surpasses understanding, right? That we would need power just to even know the depths of his love, which is beyond measurement, right? I love Psalms 103. I was reading it today. It says about our sins being thrown in the sea of forgetfulness, right? As far as the east is from the west, well, we live in a globe. So how far is that? Infinity and beyond, right? I, I can't even comprehend the depths of his love. I need his help. And Jesus said, you know, apart from me, you can do nothing. So we need Christ in, in all things. My brother earlier said, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's good to know you need him, right? You need his, his salvation, his deliverance, his forgiveness, his love, his compassion, his mercy. Mercy, I, I love that. Not getting what we deserve. We deserve hell for our sin. We deserve to be cut off. But God, who is rich in mercy, paid our price, right? He forgave us instead of giving us the hammer his son did for us. Amen? So we could live free. So we could be justified through faith in him and follow him into life. Things that last. Not to indulge in the flesh. So, And then in chapter 4 of Ephesians, Paul says in the beginning, To walk worthy of the calling you have received. See, God's called you into his family and he got a job designed just for you from the beginning of creation he had some works planned out for you that you should walk in them that you should do them right partnering with him and it's him working in us and i get it we mess up we fall down we make mistakes but we're growing through that 
and don't run from him if you mess up. You know, confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Man, just run to him. I, I love them. Uh, I just read it earlier. I can't remember what psalm it was, but he said about, And you I take refuge until the storm has passed. Sometimes we're in storms. Sometimes, you know, we're, you're human. You're going to be tempted. But he is that refuge. He is that shelter, that stronghold in a time of, of trouble. And he's, man, he's a present help and, and he helps you. And I need help, Jesus. But Ephesians 4, he says, walk worthy. It reminded me of that song. I, I don't think it's, it, I think it's by Genesis. It, it, Phil Collins, right? He, he says, I can't dance. I can't sing. The only thing about me is the way that I walk. And it made me think, you know, talk is cheap. We all stumble in, in many ways. But, man, what we got is our walk. Our walk with the Lord, right? So we got to walk worthy of the calling we have received. He called us. He, he brought us up and sat us with him in the heavenlies. Like, it wasn't because I was just super awesome one day and God all right. No, in his mercy, he lifted me up and placed me on the rock that is bigger than myself. Amen? And he wants to do that in your life, too, and show you how to live. Things that last. Like he said in Isaiah, he said, why are you spending money on things that don't satisfy? You know, sex looks good, but it's not going to satisfy you. It looks good to the flesh, and your flesh cries out for it and wants more and more and more but in the end it's just dust it's just a body that looks beautiful in the moment but like a flower wilts you know the flesh just wants to indulge and overindulge and keep going and and the world likes to justify and it's like well if it makes you feel good do it right but we have his word and he promises if we draw near to him and listen to his word that we will eat of good things that he'll show us how to live. So, all we have really is our walk, ab abiding with him. In him, we find mercy, forgiveness, redemption, correction. I'm reminded of Joseph coat of many colors and I've talked about him before but man when he was down and out sold into slavery kind of given the riot you know in a moment he could have fallen into temptation he could have given into his lust but he held on to the promises of God that this wasn't the end of the story see this isn't the end of your story things might look down at the moment but it ain't going to stay there. You have hope in this life and even more in the one to come because of what Christ has done. So we got to look to him, stay surrendered, say okay. That's what it is. It's that initial okay, Jesus, and then just walking with him. Okay, okay, and drawing near because no one loves you like he does. No one's there for you when you're down and out like he is. No one else can lift you up and breathe life into you and show you why you are here in this body. We're his temple. We're made for his glory. And living apart from that is bondage and death. And it leads to, well, I just said it, death. But God is good and he is faithful to what he started. He will finish. Just look to him, run to him, take refuge in him, praise him. For you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God bless you. I hope you got something out from all, from all this uh, rambling of a madman. Jesus loves me. This I know. And I pray that you would too. Be blessed.